Zipper rolls out to the right, pitches off to Taylor, and Taylor's to the 20. Down to the 15, down to the 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Touchdown, Billy Taylor! Touchdown, Billy Taylor! Billy Taylor scored a touchdown from 21 yards out. The crowd goes berserk. It was November 22nd, 1969 that they came to Barry, Michigan, all dressed in maize and blue. The words were said, the prayers were read, and everybody cried. But when they closed the coffin, there was someone else inside. Oh, they came to Barry, Michigan, but Michigan wasn't dead. And when the game was over, it was someone else instead. Eleven Michigan Wolverines put on the gloves of gray, and as the organ played the victors, they laid Woody Hayes away. Under center is Wangler at the 45. He goes back. He's looking for a receiver. He throws downfield to fire. Who's got it better than us? Nobody! Welcome to the Michigan Man Podcast on Wolverine Sports Radio, a member of the V-Sporto Network and in partnership with SB Nation's Maze and Brew for Wolverine fans from coast to coast. Go Blue and welcome to our Indiana Visitors Edition. I'm your host, Mike Fitzpatrick. In just a moment, we'll be joined by the legendary radio voice of Indiana football and basketball, Don Fisher. But first, let's get started as we always do with my view from Section 17. On Saturday, we gather in the big house for the final time this season. We always have mixed emotions at the final home game. We're saying goodbye to the seniors and enjoying something we wait so long for each year, joining our family and friends for a day of celebrating tradition, relationships, and of course, Michigan football. When the season opened on a muggy Saturday night in South Bend, many of us thought, oh no, this is not the way we want it to start. But since that night, through more steamy weather, leaves falling from the trees, and now snow on the ground, we have watched this team get better and better each week. We're 9-1 heading into Saturday's home finale. It's been a good season, but we want more, and we know what has to be done. Starting this Saturday, it's taking care of business against IU and staying healthy. If we do that, we know what's coming next. Ohio State, Urban Meyer, and the Buckeyes. But we'll have time to talk about that next week. The last time Michigan lost to Indiana was 1987 down in Bloomington. Bo was the head coach back then, and it's a game Hoosier fans still talk about. It was a huge program win. The man behind the microphone that night is our guest today. Up next on our visitor's segment, we welcome the Hall of Fame radio voice of Hoosier football and basketball, Don Fisher. I apologize in advance for some of the audio quality. Don was on his way to a doctor's appointment in his car, so you know how that goes. He's up next here on The Michigan Man on Wolverine Sports Radio a member of the V Sporto Network, and in partnership with SB Nation's Maze and Brew. Joining us on our visitor's segment today is the radio play-by-play voice of Hoosier football and basketball, Don Fisher. Good to have you back with us, Don. Hey, Mike. How are you? I am well, thank you, sir, on a snowy morning here in Michigan, and we might have some of that come Saturday uh, in the big house. Can't wait for the game on Saturday. Of course, it's the finale at home for Michigan. Don, tell our listeners, though, how many years you've been in the booth as the radio voice of Indiana football and basketball. Uh, this is my 46, so I've been around a while. <laughs> well, you've seen a lot of uh, good games. Uh, the last time Indiana beat Michigan was in 1987. Uh, Bill Mallory was head coach at IU. Bo was on the sidelines for us. It was a crazy weather night, as I remember it. That stadium was loud. Talk about that game and your memories of what a great win it was for Indiana. Well, it was a great win for Indiana, no question about it. It was the first time in history that Indiana had beat both Ohio State and Michigan in the same year. And that particular night, uh, it was raining, and it rained the entire night. The thing, 
the thing that was crazy about it, and and I don't know if the Michigan fans remember this or not, and they probably don't, uh, but the fact of the matter is the rain uh, in the third quarter of the game uh, and the wind was blowing from the north to the south. And uh, Indiana was going north to south and had the wind at their back. And as the fourth quarter unfolded, uh, literally, as far as the, the, the change of direction for both teams, the wind started blowing from the south to the north. And Indiana had the wind at its back <laughs> for the uh, uh, fourth quarter as well as the third quarter. So they, they got a little advantage there, uh, to say the least. And, and But more than anything, what was dramatic about that victory was the fact that Indiana uh, had struggled so mightily against the big powers of the Big Ten in those years, uh, as they have since then. <laughs> but uh, but they were able to pick up a victory. And I do remember the crowd being really, really loud. And in those days, uh, Indiana crowds uh, were pretty good. Uh, I say that in the sense that I've not been enamored with our fan base for a long time since, of course, we haven't been a big winner for a long time. Uh, outside of the 2007 season uh, when we went to the Insight Bowl. But uh, when you look back at it, uh, uh, those crowds were pretty good. And, of course, Bo, Bo Schembecker was the coach of Michigan, and he was not pleased with the noise. Uh, his quarterback couldn't, hear the, uh, couldn't get his players to hear the signals, and he called timeout two or three times. He was pretty upset about how loud our crowd was, which is ironic when we think about how loud it can get at Michigan Stadium with 108,000 or 103 at the time or whatever the number was. Uh, in the end, it was 46 or 47,000. Made you pretty upset. So it was kind of interesting. <laughs> I remember it well. It was a big win for Indiana, as you mentioned. It was also the same year that IU went down to uh, Columbus and not only beat Ohio State, but beat their butts. Uh, they did. There was no question about it. That was, that was probably the highlight uh, win in Bill Mallory's career because Bill had coached at Ohio State for Woody Hayes at one time and uh, he loved Woody and, and he loved the program there but he was not a big fan of the Ohio State fans. <laughs> he, he always thought they were pretty arrogant and uh, he, he wanted any time that, he, that Indiana played Ohio State he was fired up to, to win a ball game and uh, they, they handled the Ohio State two or three times in that era, the Bill Mallory era, which was really ironic because Indiana hasn't done that set. Well, Don, looking at this year's team, um, IU broke a four-game losing streak and a wild one over Maryland uh, on Saturday in Bloomington, got them back to 500. It's really been an up-and-down year for this team, hasn't it? It has. There's no question that the big story of this team uh, at the beginning of the season was the young defense, the fact that they had lost eight starters from last year's ball club, but I think, uh, and nationally finished 26th defensively, uh, which is the best Indiana has done in many moons, maybe ever, uh, as far as a ranking is concerned uh, for a defensive team at Indiana, which has always been the Achilles heel of this program. So that said, uh, there was real consternation going into the season about how good this team could be because last year the offense was not very good. Uh, it struggled mightily uh, with two quarterbacks, Richard Lego and and Peyton Ramsey was re- very young at that time, and neither, uh, neither, you know, the, the, the offense wasn't uh, uh, even competent in comparison with the defense uh, the year before. So um, there was real, there was a concern that this team wasn't going to be very good. And then all of a sudden, they win four out of their first ball game, uh, five ball games out of the box, and then the expectations went sky high. And since that time, of course, Indiana has played the Ohio States, the Penn States, the Michigan States, all those teams, and uh, they have not done very, very well until they broke the four-game losing streak against Maryland this past week. So uh, there was there was an up at one time in the early part of the year, and then it, it kind of slid downwards, and, and now everybody's kind of wondering what it's going to end up like because obviously the win over Maryland does put Indiana a game away from bowl eligibility with five victories, and uh, – They've got a very tough road to hoe here with Michigan and Purdue at the end of the season. You know, when you look at the defensive numbers for the Hoosiers, Don, they're really impressive. Uh, 24 takeaways, which leads the Big Ten. Uh, 11 picks, 13 fumble recoveries, which leads the nation. On paper, this looks like a defense you have to take seriously. 
Well, I, I think that's true. Uh, it, the bye week helped this team a little bit, but then you look at the stats from the Maryland ball game and you look at the running numbers uh, and the number of total yards that Maryland had in that contest, and then you start wondering again. You start shaking your head, how did they win the game? Because <laughs> they gave up over 550 yards uh, in, in offense to Maryland uh, while only getting about 375 themselves. So you look at it and and you just wonder, uh, how did they win? Well, basically, it was a different type of or a different style of play from Indiana in this contest against Maryland. So, uh, uh, Tom Allen decided in this particular situation that he, he did not think that Indiana could deal with the speed that Maryland put on the field, so he decided to play kind of a, an umbrella-type defense to keep the ball in front as much as they possibly could and uh, bend don't break philosophy and believe it or not it actually worked because they Maryland had to settle for field goals I think the first three times that they scored in the ball game um, and Indiana was able to keep them off the scoreboard from going over the top and, and going deep on them that type of thing they kept the ball in front they gave up a ton of yardage in this ball game but they were able to finally come up with a victory the offense did enough of this job to get the job done and when you look at this football team, it's flawed. There's no question about that. They are, they are very young on the defensive side. They make mistakes. But they also, uh, as you pointed out, have done a great job of getting takeaways, uh, getting turnovers. And, and so they're very aggressive with the way that they play. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how they go about uh, defending Michigan because Michigan is such a really good offensive football team. And, and so uh, very oriented toward the run game, but Shea Patterson has made a difference in the passing game as well. So it's going to be a real struggle for Indiana in this contest. I don't think there's any question. You know, one of the uh, the young players from Indiana I'm looking forward to seeing is a freshman running back, Stevie Scott, and he's had quite a year. Uh, sits at 894 rushing yards coming into Saturday, eight touchdowns, which I think is a record in Indiana. There is a lot to like about this young man, isn't there, Don? Yeah, for, for a freshman, uh, he's, he's approaching breaking most of the freshman records. Uh, he's done a terrific job in the sense that he has been their primary running back. Uh, he's a big, strong kid. He's about 6'2 and 230 pounds. Uh, he's got a decent burst, but he's not, you know, foot speed-wise, he's not going to outrun a lot of guys, even though a couple of times it looked this year like, uh, he just had a dramatic amount of speed for a guy his size. But uh, in truth, he, he just is more of a power runner. And honestly, um, if he was in a, in a system where they played an eye formation, the old eye formation, that type of thing, he'd probably be a fullback and be a very good one. And one of those guys that they would utilize a lot. Uh, he, in some respects, and this is kind of an exaggeration, but he reminds you of, the, of Mike Allstott from Purdue a few many years ago fans remember who that was mm -hmm. but that guy was just a, a stud running back in the sense that he was more of a fullback than anything else he was huge in in size and physicality and they used him as a tailback and and he was really tough to bring down and scott's, scott's a little bit like that he's not quite that big um, and he's probably got a little more speed than all scott a little more speed than all scott had but honestly uh he's he's a different kind of running back in today's game so to speak uh, but he has done a really nice job this year for this Indiana football team. And there are a lot of people that never heard of Stevie Scott simply because he was hurt his senior year and he wasn't highly recruited. He's a good-looking runner. We'll get a good look at him on Saturday in Ann Arbor. We know the last three games, Don, have been really, really tight between these two teams. Two overtime games down in Bloomington, and the last time here, was a, it was tight until the end. If this Indiana team is at their best on Saturday, cuts down on the mistakes, do you think they can make this a game? Oh, I don't think there's any question they could. But the question is, will they, will they not make the mistakes that they've been making from a defensive standpoint? Because I don't think they can afford that. And then can they move the ball against this defense? Uh, this defense has been phenomenal all year long. Indiana's face of defenses this year that they've really struggled with, i.e. Michigan State and Iowa. In fact, they didn't do a thing against the Iowa defense. It was probably one of their worst performances of the year from an offensive standpoint. The thing that's been, uh, you know, really positive, however, is Peyton Ramsey's performance uh, and changing as the year has gone on. And, and last week, and the one thing that's Ramsey in regard to him and his abilities, uh, he's not the most flashy quarterback. He's 
not one of those guys that can that can just make you miss with uh, how he runs the football, and but he and he doesn't throw the ball great downfield. Except last week he did, and a big part of that was I think his arm got freshened up after the bye week, uh, and they didn't use him very much uh, during the bye week at all. He even didn't take many snaps. They just wanted to get him refreshed and, and get him healthy again because he'd been dinged a little bit uh, and he played through it. But the thing is that Indiana uh, has been able to move the football through the air better than they have on the ground this year, but it's basically with short passes, and, and they have not had big chunk plays. And yet two two times last week, uh, Peyton threw the ball down the field for touchdowns on big plays, 35 yards, 47 yards, those kinds of plays, and, uh, and did a great job of getting the ball down the field. And if he continues to do that, uh, again, the defense can't just stack up on the line and, and take away just the short game passes. They're going to have to defend honestly. The problem is that Michigan can defend just about anybody in the country honestly <laughs> and get the job done, and, and Indiana's going to have a chance for So it, I think they have to play almost, I don't want to say a perfect game, but doggone close to it. Well, it's 4 p.m. kickoff on Saturday, as we know. Uh, really, uh, it's going to be a night game, and if the weather forecast holds up, Maybe even another snow globe game like uh, two years ago, Don. It should be fun. <laughs> well, we, we've had a number of different weather challenges this year. I guess everybody has uh, through the Midwest. It's been an odd year for weather. Uh, and so uh, snow would not be anything that we would think would be abnormal at this no. point of the season. My guest today has been the uh, legendary voice of Indiana football and basketball, Don Fisher. Don, as always, thanks for your time. We enjoy having you with us. So um, have a great time on Saturday, and we look forward to our next visit. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Quick hits is next as we wrap it up for another week here on The Michigan Man on Wolverine Sports Radio, a member of the V-Sporto Network, and in partnership with SB Nation's Maze & Brew. On quick hits today, nothing new on the injury front. Levert Hill is in concussion protocol, so we're not sure about him. But other than that, for week 11 of the season, we are in outstanding shape. Here are a few game day facts. Michigan has commanding lead in this series, 57 wins against 9 losses. The first meeting between these two teams was a 12 to nothing win for us on November 3, 1900, here in Ann Arbor. Last year, we went into overtime down there on October 14th, and 127 to 20. Tom Allen is 10 and 13, and in his second year as head coach of the Hoosiers. Last year they were 2 and 7 in the Big Ten and 5 and 7 overall. They are 5 and 5 heading into this Saturday's action. The weather forecast for the game has changed almost daily this week. As we record this morning, the forecast for today, Thursday, is 3 to 5 inches of snow here in Metro Detroit, with more on the way for Friday. Not much, but a little bit more. As of this morning, the weatherman is saying temps at kickoff will be in the mid-30s, dropping into the 20s during the game. There is a 40% chance of rain showers, which could turn to snow after the sun goes down. So if you're headed to the game, bundle up and bring your rain gear. Kickoff is just after 4 p.m. If we take care of business on Saturday, we know what's next. Nothing would be sweeter than going down to Columbus next weekend and putting a bow on the season by beating Ohio State. I'd like to see us crush them, but I'll take a W any way I can get it. On Tuesday's game day show, my guest will be the angel of the big house, beat writer Angelique Shingelos from the Detroit News. On Thursday, we'll be joined by a guy Michigan fans love to hate, Ohio State beat writer Tim May from the Columbus Dispatch. So first things first, let's take care of Indiana in the home finale, and then join me next week as we prepare for what could be an epic week of hype. That will take care of us for another week. Thanks for tuning in as always. I'm your host, Mike Fitzpatrick. Have a great Wolverine weekend, everyone. And until next time, take care. And as always, go blue. Thanks for joining us today on The Michigan Man here on Wolverine Sports Radio, a member of the V Sporto Network and in partnership with SB Nation's Maze and Brew. Our listener lines are open 24 7 for your calls at 313-263-4842. That's 313-263-4842. 
or email us at the Michigan Man Podcast at yahoo.com. That's the Michigan Man Podcast at yahoo.com. The Michigan Man Podcast is produced at the studios of Robin Lynn Productions, Allen Park, Michigan, and is not affiliated with the University of Michigan. Go Blue!